We're going to use Unity 3D to visualize some of this data from census. And the data I'm interested in, or the two things that we're going to first graph, is going to be the population from each suburb, so this is Wyndham Vale, and this is Turak, for 65 years and over. So in uh, Wyndham Vale, it's 5.3% of the population. So of all the people that were surveyed in Wyndham Vale, only 5.3% of them were over 65. In Turak, there's 22%. So of the people, all the people that were asked in Turak, 22% of those people were over the age of 65. So this is going to be an easy one to graph because uh, the, the values are very um, opposite. So they'll stand out. So the first thing we're going to do is open up Unity. Let's make a new project. I'm going to call it my data viz practice. I'm going to also click on asset packages because I want characters to be included. We're going to make it like a first person control. And click done. And then create project. Wait for Unity to load. And just remember these numbers. So 5.3 and 22. They're the two numbers that we're going to have to uh, use when we're creating our 3D shapes. Once Unity opens, it should look similar to this. If it doesn't, that's fine. You go up to your layout, drop down menu up here. It might look like two by three. It might look like a full split. Whatever it looks like, you can change it to my, what I'm using here, which is a wide. I like wide because it shows me more space in the design area. This is the hierarchy, which is where all of my elements are listed. And these are our assets that we can drag in and use, it's like our project files. And in the inspector window, if I click on an element in my scene, that's the settings for that element. So that's a quick intro. Um, shortcuts you'll need to know are holding op option or alt and pressing down with the mouse button, left mouse button and, and um, moving it will allow you to rotate and look around this 3D world. If you hold down alt, option and command, so alt and command, it changes to a hand so you can sort of um, go up and down on the X and Y axis. So with the, a combination of those two and scrolling with the, the zoom, which is the scroll wheel on the mouse, you should be able to navigate your 3D world fairly quickly. It might get a little bit um, hard at the start, but you'll get used to it. So the first thing I want to do is bring in a 3D object. This is going to be our base, our cube. I'm just going to make a floor. Um, it doesn't matter where it is yet because I haven't put a first person controller on. So the way we move objects are on the axes. So see here we have the up, which is the Y, the X going to the right and left and the Z going back deeper or more towards you. So if I wanted to move my object, I would drag it on one of those axes. I wouldn't drag, you can drag it from the middle, but you don't know where it's going on what axis. It's harder to harder to control. Same goes for if I select this tool up here, this button, this is changing the shape. Just the same as we would in Photoshop or another program. Um, we can change the height, the width and the depth of an object. And we can do it all at once from the middle or one of the axes by itself. So if we're making a plane or something to stand on, I want to make it thin. I'll zoom in a bit and move around and probably long. So wide and thin like, just like a patch of grass or something. We're going to make it like a platform that I can uh, put my first person controller on. There we go. Now I'm going to go into my standard assets character folder characters, first person controller and under prefabs 
I'm going to drag this first person controller onto my platform. Now he's halfway through the, if you can see, he's halfway through the platform. So if I push play, he's going to fall through it. And I don't want that. So I'm going to not, you, be careful that you don't drag the scale option up. You want to go back to the moving tool up here. That's the arrow. And then move him up above the platform. So now if I push play, I've just created a basic platform to walk on and I can view around like a first person shooter using WASD to move back and forth and side to side and the mouse to look up and down and around. So that's the first step. My platform is a little bit small so I'm going to click on that again and resize it and make it a little bit bigger. Now once you've got a lot of objects and you don't know where it is or you want to click on it or focus to it without you know, scrolling around your map, you just go to your hierarchy and you just double click. So if I want to go to my first person controller that I dragged in, double click here and it will zoom in straight away. If I want to select my cube or my platform, double click. It will uh, zoom in on it and focus on it automatically. Okay, the next step is, remember my numbers from um, here, which are 5.3, 22. So I'm going to use those numbers to scale two objects. One is going to be on the left, one is going to be on the right. First one is going to be, just going to move this object. And I'll put it about here. And this object is going to be scale on the Y, so that's the Y up and down. I'm going to scale at 22. This is going to represent my Wyndham Veil over 65s. Now the problem is it's going underneath a bit, so you just have to zoom out a little bit and just move it up until the shadow meets the object at the bottom. Now I'm going to go Command D, watch down here. It duplicates, so there's an actual shape inside of this shape. I'm just going to drag it out. I've just duplicated it, copied it. And this one's going to be, instead of 22, it's going to be 5.3. Hit enter. And I'm going to move this shape down just so it hits its shadow about there. Uh, push play just to test. So there's my two objects, just like a graph in Excel, except it's 3D and interactive. But there's a problem, I don't know what they mean, there's no labels, I don't know what they stand for, it could be just two pillars, I don't know what they are, so let's fix that up. I'm going to put in another 3D object, some 3D text, and this 3D text is going to be just labels for those two bars. So on the right here, I have my inspector window, if I've got it selected. I can say this is track and it is 5.3%. And I'm going to go Command D. Oops, I'm going to go Command D. Now I'm going to drag that over. And this one is going to be called Win Then Veil 22%. And I'll put it a little bit lower. So I'm gonna to have to lower this two rack one. And now let's push play and see what that looks like. There you go, they don't quite line up, but we can fix that. But if I was starting to walk, let's, let's do that. Let's move our first person controller, double click, zoom out a bit, and just go back here so I can see where I'm dragging him on the blue axis. And we'll bring him back so he starts out here. There you go. Now another thing you can do, that's just one data set or two things that you want to um, compare. We could put another image in here of something that represents over 65s. So I'm just going to search over 65 and go to images. 
This one looks good. I think I've, I've used this one. Close that. Now, the beauty about Unity is that you can use images just like this by dragging them into, go to your assets folder, the top level of your assets folder, and just drag that image in to your assets. And now it's something that you can actually use in your project. So if I go to make it like a frame to put that picture in, I'll just put another cube in, and I will make it a little bit bigger using the scale tool. But I'll make it flatter, so I'll scale that in, make it thin, and let's zoom in a bit. I can place that image now onto that. It's upside down, so that's all right. I'll show you how to rotate. This middle tool here is a rotate tool. Now the same deal for rotating. See the colored lines there. You only want to rotate on the axis that you need to. So if I rotate just from the middle, I don't know where it's going and I have no control over it. So I'll just undo Command Z and I'll rotate it on the, it looks like, the blue. So I want to rotate it around. So I'll just grab the blue line and rotate it that way. It's about right. And I'll put it on the Wyndham Vale side because they all look happy. And I want to rotate it a little bit towards the player. So I'll just rotate it on the uh, yellow line axis. So let's see what that looks like. There you go. Maybe you can make it a little bit bigger, but you sort of get the point. Let's make it a bit bigger on here. So a bit wider and a bit higher. Wyndham Vale is obviously more. Oh, actually, I think we've must, mm, messed up the um, the data. Wasn't it around the other way? So Wyndham Vale has five point three, not Turak, and Turak has twenty two. So this is supposed to be around the other way. Let's change that to. If I click on my item here in here or in my inspector, I'll just change this to two rack. And this one to Wind and Vale. Where Wind and Vale. There you go, that's better. So and just by looking at this, you can see the massive difference in the population of over 65s for the people that were surveyed in those two separate suburbs. There's a lot more of the population that are over 65 or older in Turak than there are in Windvale. So obviously there's a lot more younger people, younger families here than there are in Turak. So now I want you to um, have a play around in Unity and graph some of these other data points here. Maybe do the zero to four year olds. There's a difference there. 18, 16 versus 420. And you might, let's, let's do that actually before I end this, this video. How would I make a ratio of 1816 versus 420? That's easy. We'll go into Excel. So the first one is 1816 versus 421, I think it was. 420. So the ratio is equal to the smaller number divided by the bigger number and then this equals the oops I'll just chuck that over this side and then this equals one divided that number 
So for for every one person, or well, that's the ratio. It's four point three to point two. If you were to simplify this, so when we're making those boxes, remember we put the five point three and the the twenty two in in the y, the axis for the to make them taller. You would put four point three over there, and for this box you would put point, point 0.2 if you were rounding it. So Turak has a lot less um, young 0 to 4 year olds. So do do a few of those. That's how you would do that's how you work out ratios. There's a formula. Do the smaller number divided by the larger number. And then that goes on the side of the smaller number and then to find out the other side is 1 divided that new number that you've you've made out of that first division have a play with other shapes so if I was in unity I could insert other 3D objects spheres, capsules, cylinders um, you can also import objects from SketchUp and other programs like, Tink like Tinkercad but we'll do that later once you've done that go to build settings and make sure it's set to Mac OS X and PC and say build you won't be able to run it but I will be able to run it on my computer because you don't have um, the privileges on the, the computers at, at school in the lab but that's fine this is the file that I'll need to check your data visualization that you've made in Unity.